What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for being here today. Appreciate that. You are as much of a Packers junkie as I am. And even though it is a bye week and it's still not even this next Monday that's a game, but the following Monday is the next game, you still can't get enough Packers content, which I absolutely love. So thanks so much for being here. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe. But today is going to be part two in our two part series uh, covering what the 2023 roster could potentially look like for the Packers, or at least which players on this current team could still be on that 2023 version of the Packers. So if you missed yesterday's episode, first of all, please make sure to go back and watch that one. It will certainly help before you watch this one. But yesterday was part one, and we went over the offense. Today, we're going to be going over defense and special teams. And again, one of the reasons I'm doing this is not just to look ahead to 2023, but also to enjoy these last four games in all likelihood of 2022. And especially for these players who may no longer be wearing the green and gold, because as I mentioned last year, around this time, it you know dawned on me, hey, Devontae Adams probably you know, could potentially not be on this team any longer amongst others. And I uh, really got to enjoy those last handful of games with Devontae Adams. So uh, if you're somebody that's sentimental to these players and they could be gone after this season, just kind of wanted to call that out and be like, hey, you know, maybe enjoy these last four games. But also it's a bye week. So I wanted to look at what, you know, some of these players and who could legitimately make up this roster in 2023 as well. As I mentioned, it's near impossible to try to figure out what direction this team could go in. So much is dependent upon what happens with Aaron Rodgers, what happens with maybe David Bakhtiari, amongst others. Green Bay could really go in three different directions. They could bring Rodgers back if he wants to be back and go all in on another season. Probably not as effectively as they have in the past because they are running out of credit card space on their credit card, but there's a way that they can still borrow some from the future and kind of go all in again. They could kind of go midway and they could kind of keep the band kind of together, bring in some low price veterans, rebuild through the draft as they always do, and just try to see if they can make things better in 2023. Probably a new defensive coordinator and some coaching changes and see if that can kind of fix some of the problems that they've had this year. And then the other is the Band-Aid rip. And I know some of you posted yesterday of like, they can't really do a full Band-Aid rip because of some of the salary cap implications. You can still eat a lot of that salary cap in 2023 and not borrow from the future, which helps you clear things up in 2024, 2025, 2026, and beyond. So it's still not going to be pretty. And they're still going to have to borrow money from 2024 and future years, even if they want to rip the Band-Aid. Uh, but it gets you closer. It doesn't continue to borrow from the future. And it gets some of these contracts that are a little bit exorbitant and older aging players off the books. And it allows you to start kind of rebuilding with younger players. So I will say this, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. There's no ideal scenario. I mean, the ideal scenario is that probably what Rogers comes back, they make maybe a couple coaching changes, defensive coordinator comes in, guys get healthy, maybe they hit on a couple draft picks, maybe they find another Razul Douglas or Devondre Campbell, Rudy Ford, Keyshawn Nixon, some really low priced free agents that can help the team. And maybe they'd make a run at it in 2024. And maybe, you know, you get hot at the right time in the playoffs, so they win a Super Bowl, Rogers rides off into the sunset, and then you start the rebuild after that. Probably what? maybe a, a one or 2% chance, like that might be, uh, you know, pushing it a little bit, but that's the ideal scenario. But what I mean by there's no realistic, you know, perfect scenario is that you can't really go all in because you've borrowed so much from the future already. And you're, like I said, the credit card's getting a little bit maxed out. So you can't do a full all in. There will be other teams who can go all in a lot farther than what they can, which is always going to put them a little bit behind the eight ball. So if you want to go the all in direction, they can't really do it to the best of their ability because of how much they have borrowed already in 2020 and 2021 and in 2022 to build those teams. It's going to, you know, it's going to hurt in these next couple of years because they just can't go all in in the same way. The middle ground is arguably always one of the worst places to be because you're not really doing everything you can to win. And you're probably stuck in that famous Jeff Fisher, what, seven and 10, eight and eight, uh, you know, area where you're getting crappy draft picks. You're a meh team. You win some games, you lose some games, and it's just kind of a, you're in no man's land, right? 
And then there's the, the, the Band-Aid rip, which as I mentioned, if you're gonna do that, usually you purge a lot and you save a bunch of money, but their contracts are set up where even if you purge everything, it hits the salary cap all at once and you still have to borrow from the future. So there's no perfect scenario for any of those things. And a lot of these decisions are ultimately gonna come down to the secondary GM, which is Aaron Rodgers and what he wants to do next year. So a lot will be up in the air, but today we're gonna be going over defense and special teams. Again, yesterday we went over offense. So if you wanna check that out before this, please make sure to do so. But we're going to start with the defensive line. So let's start with our good friend, Dean Lowry. Dean Lowry's contract will be voided. He is going to be 29 years old next year, and he's basically going to become a unrestricted free agent. I think this is ultimately up probably to Dean Lowry. And what I mean by that is I think Green Bay is going to say, we've got Slayton, we've got Clark, we've got Wyatt. Spoiler alert, those three guys are going to be back. Uh, but we've got those three guys we're going to get some guys in the draft. We might sign another, you know, low tiered veteran to be kind of a rotational guy, but we've got our three starters if need be in Wyatt Slayton and Kenny Clark. And we're comfortable with those guys being our main, you know, core of our defensive line moving forward. So Dean, if you want to go out and test free agency, by all means, go ahead. If you want to, you know, come back near a vet minimum deal and be a rotational guy in Green Bay, we'd love to have you back. But in all likelihood, this is probably Dean Lowry's last year in Green Bay, um, which I know a lot of people will probably maybe celebrate. Here's what I will say about Dean Lowry. If Dean Lowry this entire time had been the Packers' fourth or fifth defensive lineman, I think we would have a totally different you know, view and image of Dean Lowry. If he's your fifth best defensive lineman, that is a really good fifth defensive lineman. The issue, which isn't Dean Lowry's fault, is that he's had to constantly be the second best defensive lineman. And that's not what you want Dean Lowry to be. You kind of want him to be that rotational guy playing, you know, 20 ish snaps per game. If he's that, he, he could play that role phenomenally well. And he could play that role phenomenally well next year also. I just think that Green Bay is going to say, you're almost 30. We've done the Dean Lowry thing now for a long time. We're ready to go in a different direction. You're probably ready to go in a different direction. You're probably going to make more money elsewhere. It's just time, right? So I think Dean Lowry unlikely to be back if he wants to stay in Green Bay. Possibility that he could come back on you know a lower deal and they bring him in as a rotational guy on a, a low price deal. Like that, that makes sense. But I just don't necessarily see that happening. Demonte Wyatt obviously will be returning. Kenny Clark obviously will be returning, but could be a restructure candidate to save some money if they do want to add more people next year. So Kenny Clark will be one to, to look at as a, a uh, potential restructure candidate, but he will be back for sure. And then TJ Slayton will also be an obvious return. So Lowry probably gone. Wyatt and Clark and Slayton will be back. That brings us to Jonathan Ford, seventh round pick. He is on con uh, under contract, so as long as he makes it on the team through the season, which even if he doesn't, he probably makes it back in the practice squad, gets a futures deal. So I digress. Long story short, he'll be back on the team next year, but we'll have to earn his his literal job in training camp to see if he can be one of those rotational pieces next year. Jerron Reed, I do not see him coming back. He will His contract will also be voided, which means he becomes a free agent. He'll be 31 years old. He's been okay. There's times where he looks really good. There's times where he disappears for large stretches, which is exactly what we've seen out of Jerron Reed in his career so far. Kind of in the same spot as Dean Lowry. If he wants to come back on a cheaper deal and be your fifth rotational guy, awesome. Like you would, you don't mind that at all, but he'll probably get paid a little bit more somewhere else. And I have a feeling Jerron Reed will not be back in Green Bay next year. And then you've got two guys on your practice squad, Chris Slayton and Jack Heflin. Heflin, I'm fairly confident, will get a futures deal and will have a chance to compete for a roster spot next year. I think the same it can be said for Chris Slayton. Uh, he had a really nice preseason. He will be 27 years old. And usually when you're looking for guys on like future deals, you're looking more towards those like 23, 24 year olds. So I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, but Slayton probably gets a futures deal and gets a chance to compete in training camp next year, mostly based on what he was able to do in training camp and preseason for the Packers. All right, that brings us to edge rusher. And pro one of the more difficult ones on this entire list is Preston Smith. Preston has not had a good year. He's 31, he will be 31 years of age next year. And I will be the first to readily admit, I have basically thought that, you know, Preston Smith was going to be gone on numerous different occasions over the last couple of years, and they've kept bringing him back. And in 2021, 
that worked out pretty well. This year, it hasn't worked out quite so well. There is the possibility that he could be a June 1st cut, which would push money into the future. I think that's actually somewhat likely um, in the direction that I would say is, is, like I said, probably most likely. But like I said, I've written off Preston Smith like three times and he keeps coming back. So uh, that's a possibility. He could be a restructure candidate. He could be another player that's tied to Aaron Rodgers in the effect that if, if Aaron's back and they start, you know, maybe building a team that they think can compete next year again, they probably restructure him and bring him back for another season. The other thing that this, this is tied to a little bit, I think there's a possibility that if this entire edge, or let's just be real, if, if Rashawn Gary was healthy, you feel semi-confident just going into next year with Rashawn Gary and Kingsley and Igbari as your edge rushers. You probably draft a couple guys to compete for those next spots, maybe bring in uh, you know, a low-tier free agent to compete as well. I think you feel okay with that. The issue is that Rashawn's coming off a torn ACL, and it could be an Elton Jenkins-type recovery where he's not ready right away, and even when he comes back, he's not fully Rashawn Gary. You probably have him on a little bit of a pitch count, so that clouds this as well. Because do you really want to go into the season with Gary coming back from an ACL, no Preston Smith, and like all of a sudden Kingsley and Igbari and a couple of rookies are your top guys? That doesn't feel great to start the season. So I do think that there's a decent chance that he could come back and they just restructure his deal and kind of push more money into the future. Not what I would do personally. I would go in a different direction, but uh, this is a coin flip, I think, and it could go either way. I, I lean towards him not being back, but... Like I said, I've written him off before and he keeps coming back. So your guess is as good as mine with Preston Smith. But I'm going to say tied to Aaron Rodgers. If Rodgers is back and they go in the compete direction, I think they restructure and push money out. If he's not back or if they just don't feel comfortable about how he's played this season, which would be understandable, they could go in a different direction as well. So like I said, I, I think that one's 50-50. Rashawn Gary will be back, but how quickly he can get back from his torn ACL will remain to be seen. Justin Hollins will be an unrestricted free agent. They could bring him back on a vet minimum deal if he doesn't sign elsewhere and if they like how he plays the remainder of this season. Kingsley and Igbari obviously will be back. Jonathan Garvin is under contract. I think he'll be back in training camp and will have to earn his spot once again in training camp. Tipa Naliai is an exclusive rights free agent, probably gets that deal done because uh, it's basically a minimum deal and he probably has to also compete in training camp. There's a chance they could non-tender him if, you know, this year just didn't go according to plan. Even when he was on the team, he didn't get activated on game day. Then he has the injury. So they could just move on, but I'm going to say they probably uh, give him the exclusive rights offer and then just make him earn his job in training camp. Ladarius Hamilton probably gets signed to a futures deal. Maybe, maybe not. Tim Ward also on the team, I guess. Uh, he's a practice squad guy, also could get a futures deal if he remains on the roster for the remainder of this year. All right, Quay Walker at inside linebacker will of course be back. Devondre Campbell, based on his contract, will almost surely be back as well. They, there could be a, a slight restructure possibility with Campbell, uh, but I fully expect him to be back. Chris Barnes is a restricted free agent. I fully expect them to non-tender him and he would become an unrestricted free agent. They could offer him a minimum deal, but just last like last game, he was a healthy scratch. So it just feels to me that they're probably ready to go in another direction with Chris Barnes. So I don't expect him to be back. Isaiah McDuffie, he will be under contract. I think he'll have to earn his spot in training camp. He's a sneaky sort of lock candidate. Like again, he you don't lock up Isaiah McDuffie like as a 53-man roster lock next year. He's going to have to earn his spot, but he's played well as a backup rotational linebacker in, in spot minutes this year. He's a core special teams guy. He's got a relatively cheap contract, which you're going to need with the way you're tied up against the salary cap. And they usually keep four to five inside linebackers. Just see, like They're not going to spend a top tier pick on an inside linebacker when they just invested one in Quay Walker. So he's kind of like a sneaky candidate that's like almost a, a pretty like a really good bet to be back next year. But either way, he'll be back in training camp and have an opportunity to compete for his job. Eric Wilson is an unrestricted free agent. Maybe they bring him back in a vet minimum deal, but you know, doesn't really matter. Uh, DQ Thomas is a practice squad player who could get brought back on a futures deal. Jair Alexander will be back. Eric Stokes will be back. Razul Douglas is interesting. I would say 99.9% .9 chance that he is back, possibly a light restructure. 
there is a very small percent chance that they could cut him. They do save money. I don't think he's a legitimate trade candidate. It, he would have to play really bad the rest of this year, and Green Bay would probably have to go the rip the Band-Aid route in order for anything to happen to Razul. I don't think it's likely, but there is a very, very small chance. I would say like 99% chance that he's back. Just couldn't quite put the 100% stamp of approval on it. Keyshawn Nixon will be very interesting. He is an unrestricted free agent. I guarantee with his punt returning and the way he's been playing in the slot that they would love to have him back. He may have priced his way out of Green Bay, which would be unfortunate, uh, but he was on a one-year deal and is a completely unrestricted free agent. So if he does hit the market, Green Bay will have competition for his services and they may not be able to win a bidding war for his services. Not that it's going to be that high, uh, but Green Bay is going to have to you know, put a a level on you know where they're willing to, to go from a market standpoint and how much they want to pay Keyshawn Nixon. Like I said, he may have played himself into a bigger contract somewhere else. Corey Ballantyne, unrestricted free agent, possible vet minimum, but again, no, no need to lose sleep over it either way. Shamar John Charles is under contract, likely back and would need to earn his spot in training camp next year. Keandre Thomas, I also feel very confident, will get a futures deal and will have the opportunity to compete next year for a spot as well. That brings us to safety. Adrian Amos has a voided contract. Can't see a scenario where Amos is back. Maybe they're able to get something done on the cheap end. It sucks, but he just looks two steps slower this year. It just looks like he's hit a wall and you just don't pay players at that point. You just let them move on. And like I said, it totally sucks because really good player, both in Chicago and in Green Bay, one of the most consistent Packers, but he just hasn't looked anywhere near himself this season with the voided contract. I just think it makes sense probably for both parties to go in another direction. Rudy Ford is basically the exact same thing as Keyshawn Nixon, unrestricted free agent who's outplayed his contract, who could get a bigger deal somewhere else. I'm sure Green Bay would love to have him back, uh, but they're going to have to make a decision on him. Core special teams player, solid safety. They're going to need safety. So there's a chance that he gets brought back. But again, once he hits the open market, everything's up for grabs at that point. Tariq Carpenter will return and have to earn his spot in training camp. Dallin Levitt's an unrestricted free agent who I could see Rich Passaccio wanting back as one of their core special teams player on a near vet minimum deal again next year. But again, he'll hit the open market. Ennis Gaines is an exclusive rights free agent. He'll return and have to earn his spot in training camp. Micah Abernathy, futures deal, earn his spot in training camp. Vernon Scott, also under contract, coming back from injury, probably will get back on the roster and will have to earn his spot. The fact that they didn't release him and you know give him an injury settlement makes me believe that there's a chance that they still like him and that they want him to compete for a spot next year. So I think that's probably the case, but again, he'll have to earn that in training camp as well. So you know, it could be a fun competition with Carpenter, Gaines, Abernathy, and Vernon Scott um, next year. And then that brings us to Darnell Savage. Savage is a guaranteed 7.9 million and you can't do anything with it unless you trade it. If you trade him, the other team takes on the fully guaranteed $7.9 million deal. You take none of it on as the Packers by trading him away. The issue is that Savage has been absolutely terrible and that there's no market for him whatsoever. So if you trade Darnell Savage to another team to free yourself of $7.9 million, you're going to probably have to attach a draft pick to it. Would Green Bay trade a fourth round pick for you know, in Darnell Savage for like a seventh round pick. I don't think they'd be in the business of doing that type of deal. That doesn't seem very Brian gutekunst but it, they, they should absolutely consider it. This is a team that needs to shed salary cap. And the only way to shed a really nice chunk of money with 7.9 million on Darnell Savage is by trading him away. And maybe, maybe while he doesn't have trade value, maybe some team really loved him as a former first round pick saw him in 2020 and said, you know what? In Mike Pettin's defense, he actually played pretty darn well. He did not play well in Joe Barry's defense. Maybe he can come back and play a defense that's similar to what Mike Pettin did, or you know, we can play him in that robber role. We can play him differently, and we think we can actually get something out of this player. So I don't think that like he necessarily has like a ton of negative value. I think some team would be interested in giving him a shot, just not at $7.9 million. So Green Bay maybe could turn half of that into signing bonus, which would mean that they would eat that half of the deal and the other team would eat the other half. So I do think there's some potential trade options for Darnell Savage. It's not going to be advantageous for Green Bay. <clears throat> I'll say that right now. Um, but 
they could get off of some of that salary, maybe have to include a draft pick or maybe have to eat some of the salary. The reason I would think that that's a possibility is they just benched him for Rudy Ford before going down with injury. They saw the same thing. He's been terrible. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I don't think it's impossible that they could find something that would move him to another team. It's just, like I said, it's not going to be advantageous for Green Bay. And it just kind of sucks all the way around that this has been basically a bust of a first round pick for Green Bay with Savage. But um, it's probably time to move on. And the issue again is that if you cut him, you pay him the full $7.9 million. You get nothing in return and you have to pay the 7.9 for a player that's not even there. So at that point, you might as well just keep him, I guess. But um, I think there's a decent, like maybe like a 15% chance that they could work out a trade. In all likelihood, he's probably back which also is not great. Uh, all right, let's go to special teams. Mason Crosby's contract will void. It's just time. They need to move on. Could they bring him back? Maybe, but like, it's just time. I think everyone knows it's time. I think the more likely scenario is that Mason just retires after this year, but nothing would shock me because it's Crosby and the Packers, but I think his contract gets voided. I think they go in another direction and there's a decent chance he just retires. Ramiz Ahmed, We'll get a futures deal. He's on the practice squad as the kicker, or, you know, backup kicker, and then he'll have to compete with somebody in training camp. Pat O'Donnell under contract. He could return. He could restructure. He could get cut. I think there's a chance that they just bring him back on his current deal and then either draft a late round punter or bring in another punter, like a legitimate punter to compete with him and then may best man win. And if they want to cut him, they can save some money uh, later on. Um, they could just restructure him. There's a couple different ways that they could go, um, but he's probably a, a 50-50 at, you know, at this point as well as to whether or not he actually makes the 53 next year. Um, and like I said, if they want to save some money, they could just cut him before that as well. So that'll be an interesting one to monitor. And then Jack Coco, I think will be back, but I think they'll definitely bring in some competition. He hasn't been very good either. So some key players who could be gone from this team and who we could be watching their last games as Green Bay Packers, Dean Lowry, Jerron Reed, Preston Smith, Chris Barnes, Keyshawn Nixon, Adrian Amos, Rudy Ford, Mason Crosby, Pat O'Donnell, and a ever so ever very so slight chance that Razul Douglas and Darnell Savage could be on that list. I just don't think so, um, but they could be. Um, but if you're looking at what's the core of your defense, who's back for sure next year, You've got Kenny Clark, Devontae Wyatt, and TJ Slayton on the defensive line. Not a bad start to a defensive line. Rashawn Gary and Kingsley and Igbari at the edge. If both are healthy, not a terrible start to your edge. Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker at inside linebacker with a likely Isaiah McDuffie as well. Jair Alexander, Eric Stokes, and almost assuredly uh, Razul Douglas at corner. And then probably Darnell Savage and a bunch of you know guys at safety that could be competing for jobs. But that's probably the core of your defense next year. So not insanely different. And all those guys I listed, again, there's going to be a few of them that are back. There's going to be probably a lot of them that are gone. Special teams will be very interested, interesting because kicker, punter, long snapper could all change. That's legitimately a chance. And you could lose Rudy Ford, Keyshawn Nixon, Dallin Levitt, who are all unrestricted free agents. You're kind of your, your core aces as well. So special teams could be a complete changeover again, and this time even with kicker, punter, long snapper. And I think the real interesting ones are probably what Preston Smith, Darnell Savage are, are probably the ones really to keep an eye on. And again, with Savage, it's basically trade him or he's going to be on the team. And, you know, Preston, like I said, I, I have no idea. I... They probably should move on. I think they're probably in a spot where they just need to keep them, especially with Rashawn ba being injured. So I think a restructure could be in order for Preston Smith. That is going to do it for me today. Always appreciate you joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow, as always, so make sure to subscribe. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.